Thank you for staying with us. You're still on to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now we'll be looking at the headlines this morning. It's time for Off the Press. Well, with me is my co-host. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? Thank you. Just what to put on a lighter note. Okay, so the first um, paper we're going to be looking at this morning is The Guardian. And um, the first headline here, the major headline here, says 1999 constitutions wear and tear. Endless reviews amendments cost National Assembly one billion naira yearly. That's a lot of money. I don't know. Why don't they just jettison this constitution and, and get a new a one? A new one. Everybody has been complaining that the 1999 constitution has a lot of flaws. Mm -hmm. So if you identify them, why are you just picking and choosing? Every year you find out something that is not good enough for you and you want to change it. And I don't know what they do that will cost one billion naira. You know what one billion naira is? Yeah. That's a million naira just times so one thousand times. A constitution? One item or two items. Or not. So let's have a constitutional conference if that's the need for us. In 2014 or 13 or thereabouts, we had a national conference organized by the then administration of Jonathan where they went to the grassroots and everybody contributed what the felt should change or what should be added or removed or something to the constitution. That document was not implemented. And to be fair to Jonathan, he said, he wanted the next administration to look into it, see what things can be used, and then implement it. And the next administration of Buhari did nothing, did nothing about it. Mm. So that document that cost Nigeria a lot of money is just there lying down. It cannot be that the whole of the more than 200 million Nigerians didn't know what they were saying. Mm. So something good could have come out of that, but that document is still there. So dust it up, see what you can do, have a constitutional conference, change the constitution if you need to, because a lot of people say this constitution came from the time of the military. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 1999 till now. Things have to, changed, things so, have evolved. Yeah. Yeah. So just go ahead and change it and put the necessary things that we need to. And voila, everything will... Well, for this one, they're saying that um, they want to do the amendment on state police. Mm. Um, Just an item. Yes, well, state police, um, value-added tax, VAT, and electoral reform. So those are the ones they're looking at. And it will cost but, one billion. Well, it will cost one billion. But guess what? Next year, again, they might say, oh, we want to change this other thing, another one billion. And based on inflation rates, that might even be higher. So, I mean... Have a constitutional conference and then move on. That might just work. All right, another one here says, time to revamp Nigeria's criminal justice system. Yeah. I think this, is, this has been a long time coming. We keep crying out about this all the time. We need to reform. We need to reform. We need to revamp um, the justice system because as of right now, people don't even trust the justice system. They're, people say they, they lack the credibility that we expect, you know, from them. But, I mean, we still, we still sing the same song every single year. Mm -hmm. So when you say it's time to revamp the justice system, what is actually being done? Do we do anything about it? Or do we just, is it just words that are just, you know, put out into the air so it seems like we're, we're saying something? So we're saying something, but we're really not doing anything about it. Yeah, what, what, what is a crime in Nigeria? We need definitions because sometimes you see some things and it seems as if it's a crime, but you find out it's not a crime. Uh, people just do the things they want to do and get away with it. What is it if you have laws that you will never implement? Laws that can never catch anybody. We've seen things that happen. Um, you cannot do X, Y, Z. And then you see the people who are making the laws mm -hmm. doing the same X, mm -hmm. Y, Z. And you ask yourself, what good are the laws? Let's not, let's not even go far. Um, I think about two weeks ago or something, we had that issue of the governor of Lagos State um, arresting the military official mm -hmm. who was on a motorcycle driving one way. one way, right? So you see people put these laws, but then they, they never uphold it. Mm. It's just there for the common man. Yeah, in, mm. in, in Lagos, we don't have Okada, you know. We don't have Okada. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. the policemen use it for Okada. They use And they, they, they take, do you know they use it as transportation? That's what I'm saying. They use and it. And the road, I literally see them. Mm -hmm. they, they, they ask you, you, they go, and then you, you climb on it, and you pay them you money. You pay them and then for, for commercial they purposes. They are the people who have the jobs that are being paid uh, and maybe the salary may not be big enough, but mm. some of these people who were doing the Okada work as it is were graduates without a, a job. Yeah, and they had to put food on their table regardless. Yeah, so 
Uh, when people were even talking about the governor arresting the person, the, the, the buzz was about the, uh, the arrest of the person flying one way. Mm -hmm. They were not even talking about the fact mm -hmm. that he was using a bike yeah. on a road that should... And he was carrying a passenger. Oh, dear. Yeah. So. And you know, most times they, they um, confiscate these bikes from these young men, you know, who are riding it because obviously it's, it's illegal to ride a bike in Lagos State, for instance. But guess what? They take these bikes and they use it for themselves. Mm. The bike that that man was driving, I'm not sure it's his. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not sure. Most times they just, you know, they tell you, oh, there's been a ban. They confiscate it and then they distribute it, you know, amongst themselves. And they start to use it for commercial purposes. So the reason why you seized it from someone, you take it and you start to use it for that same reason. Mm -hmm. So what are we saying? So that tells you when somebody tells you that, okay, we caught a sheep of crude oil on the high sea and then we burnt it mm -hmm. ah, it gives you an idea I never believe that. why why they burnt it mm -hmm. you know they, they 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 catch someone taking tusks from from our forest endangered species um they are being killed because they want to transport this thing to other places and make yeah. money they say they have seized it and then they have destroyed it uh -huh. they have gone to somewhere they have destroyed illegal refineries that so it gives you an idea when a common bike will be seized and someone else is using it, yeah. uh, what is done by, uh, to those things that they, uh, they seize. Hmm. And when you hear that we have seen some things that what like two billion naira, uh, you begin to ask yourself, was it really what two billion naira? Yes. It might have been or, five billion mm -hmm. or something. They just manufactured the numbers, changed so the trust figures. trust is the problem. Yeah, but then with our justice... Um, criminal justice system, I think we, re we, that, that yeah, we, re we really need to revamp it. And let's stop talking. Mm -hmm. Let's start doing the work. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, CBN targets 21.4% inflation. Says Naira is undervalued. As of right now, t inflation is about 28.92%. But CBN is targeting 21.4%. And says Naira is undervalued. They should be telling us what is giving rise to the inflation in the first place mm -hmm. and how they intend to tackle it. It's not just giving us figures that we are going to do this, we're going to do that. 21% even is still very high. Uh, so w why can't they bring it to a single digit? It is possible. But let them uh, tell us the things that will be done and let's see how we can key into it as well. Mm -hmm. Or we can contribute also to telling them um, what really is the problem. If I'm a farmer, for instance, I can tell you the, the problems that we have as farmers. If the other person is a trader who imports from China or Germany or anywhere, he can tell you the problems that he has so that if you can address that, inflation will have to come down. But if you m stay, stay in a glass house and you're making policies mm. for people uh, whose experiences you've never had, there's a possibility you don't that even, you... Their reality is the, totally you're, different. You're, you're f totally far far removed <laughs> from the kind of feelings that your people are feeling. Mm -hmm. So you just drop numbers and say this and that. Some things don't work in Nigeria. If you say the laws of uh, demand and supply uh, states that if this, this, this is done, uh, supply will go higher or the demand will go higher, you bring it to Nigeria, it doesn't work. So study the Nigerian terrain and not wait, wait for IMF to come and give you things that yeah. you need to do. Uh, the World Bank will come and tell you what to do and you say, yes, that's globally acceptable. Globally, who is global? When they talk about the world, uh, they, so it's someone that's making us? that, that's saying all of that. So that's someone's personal opinion or a group of people. That's their own personal opinion. But it's the fact that they say Naira is undervalued. As of today, someone was I saw online on Instagram, and someone was saying how um, about ten thousand. 10,000 pounds is how many million Naira? I think Naira to the pound is about 1,700 and something. Yeah. Yeah. The dollar yeah. is, is one, one three something, 1,300 yeah. and something. I mean, actually. I just, I feel, I feel for businesses who have to deal in FX because every single day you buy something for this amount and then you want to get something else. And that same commodity, you want to still get it and it's higher. But you ask yourself, what is this that is not tied to FX in the first place? Even the farming, I usually always say this, for you to successfully farm, you, you need farm, farm tools. Even if you're buying a tractor, you will have to deal with FX. Mm -hmm. If you're buying a, a herbicide, of the you're buying herbicides, or... you'll have to deal with FX. Fertilizer, FX, everything that you're most talking of, about. Most of the things we use here in Nigeria. Except your own strength. 
you know. <laughs> but even your own strength, you're going to buy medicine <laughs> if you, you fall sick. And it's still, it's still, it's FX. still so FX. What right. is not influenced by FX? Mm. So something fundamentally has to be done about our FX if we want, we want um, our economy to grow. Because if the Naira keeps going up, and some experts have it's said alarming. it will keep going on, up, so it might get to a point where it will be 2,000 Naira to a dollar. That means it will be like a Zimbabwean dollar now, our money mm. in Nigeria. That's it's, alarming. It's, 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 it's not good. Yeah. It's not good for us. Let's move over to the next paper. All right, um, EFCC probes 347 billion Naira funds. This is punch. Um, EFCC probes 347 billion dollar funds, someone's foreign firms. So this is a forex scandal. I mean, we're just talking about mm. FX, and right now, 347 billion dollars. How, <clears throat> how do I even do the conversion into Naira? How, how, did, how did it get to that amount? What happened? What, yeah. what, is, what is really going on? A, this is a, a, a lot. Yeah. But when you say EFCC, you know, why are they coming up now? You, you say EFCC, and then you're thinking about whether there's someone there who is in the bad books of one person or the other mm -hmm. who is in power and all that. In fact, um, let me just take the writer. So it says industrial companies, banks get lion's share under Amy Philly. Social services receive least forex allocation. An anti-corruption agency deepens forex scandal probe. Def detectives may grill five foreign companies next week. Mm. So, okay. Kudos well. to them. Let's let I them mean, let's ahead. just see. Let's just see how mm -hmm. this develops, how this story develops, and let's see what happens. But I mean, proper investigation should be, should be done into this because mm -hmm. three hundred and forty-seven billion, not naira. Dollars. <laughs> that's, I can't wrap my head around it. I can't even start to do the calculation. It's, that's a lot. So let's know what exactly happened. Mm -hmm. Where did the money go to? Where did the money come from? Where is the money now? How these, did it accumulate yes. this amount? What, so these what are the happening? questions that we want to ask. Um, all right. Another one says, FIRS projects 19 trillion in revenue, 19 trillion Naira revenue in 2024 so this year firs is looking to get <clears throat> 19 trillion naira that's from all the taxes that we pay right <laughs> yeah when 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 i when you say you're afraid that people may be taxed more experts will tell you that it is not necessarily that they're going to bring new tax it's going to make sure that the people who are already taxable mm. are remitting the taxes for instance the companies that are removing money from their staff as tax uh, money should remit this money because they do not, in most cases, remit this money to the government and all that. But we're see we're sitting here in Nigeria and seeing that you have to do renewal of your car, whatever they were talking about, one thousand every year. Mm -hmm. uh, something that was a one-off is one thousand every year, and you th tell yourself that oh, one thousand is not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just one-off, and you are paying one thousand. And then there are small things of they one thousand as well. Year, they are, <laughs> Before you know it, you're paying more than double the tax that you were supposed to pay. Mm -hmm. So what are they really doing to make sure that money comes in the, into the coffers of the nation without necessarily having to tax people? Where is the subsidy money going to? Mm. Are they sincere about how much has been made? Where is uh, the money for all other natural resources that we are mining in this country going to? Yeah. Do we have a figure for that? All that will give us a lot of money. Where is even the money that is being repatriated from, from other places, uh, corrupt uh, amounts of money that were give, uh, paid into uh, coffers of other countries, Switzerland mm -hmm. and the rest of them? What, do they even account for it? In the time of Buhari, when Abacha loot was repatriated to Nigeria, it wasn't part of the budget as some of the money that would be used to be yeah. spent. You know. When it came, they did trade that money. Mm -hmm. Trade that money. <laughs> I don't know how, oh, oh God, mm. scam. <laughs> I was just about, oh my God, scam. you took it right out of my mouth. I was just about to say that, but like, mm, mm, hold it in, hold it in. So, well. Yeah, well, let's move over to politics. Um, Ondo Assembly screened new deputy governor as Aedati was Sachs cabinet. Mm. What's your thought? I know you have a guy like with the whole Ondo thing. I'm sure you have more, more knowledge than that. So. No, no, not really, but... People, like they said, and you said that the people expected that the deputy would come from Ondo Central. But Aida uh, Tiwa, uh, graciously, I would like to use that word, graciously, 
chose someone from the late governor's place. Yeah. I, I think I think that was a good consolation to the people yes. of the war. He might want to test um, to contest the next time. Uh, he will choose a deputy maybe from somewhere else. But for now, I think it was a good move for him. Uh, let the people of Awar feel that they're still there in mm -hmm, government mm -hmm. and they lost a brother, but they didn't lose everything. Even though I know that it doesn't necessarily mean that if someone comes from your place, you will have, will have a good life, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, there were people who were complaining, was it last week, that uh, they, 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 they worked so hard for a Muslim Muslim ticket. Now they are suffering. Mm. Uh, these people, so it doesn't mean that someone in your religion will necessarily give you a better life. Someone from your locality will necessarily give you a better life. I don't know if the people of Bielsa will say when Jonathan was there, they were better than now no. or, or before then. I don't know if the people of Daura will say they were better. They are better off. Uh, because Buhari was the president and all that. I don't know w what people just see in uh, my person has to be the person that is there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why it's also connected to why the northerners are f saying that you cannot move any department of CBN or any other thing to mm. Lagos State. You are depriving the north. I mean, if something is located in your place, what does it say? Does it mean that everybody in that village will be employed? Mm -hmm. Because there's further character. So wherever it is, people from the north, south, yes, east, and they west, they have to be represented. Be. So I don't know. We mm -hmm. have to change our psyche. <laughs> we do. All right, let's move over to the nation. And the U.S. seeks removal of barriers to investment. So blanking Lord's Tinubu's economic policies. Nigeria offers compelling opportunities for investors. But then um, Blankin has said that Nigeria must remove the barriers to investment um, that we have currently. What do you think about that? I mean, the president goes to different countries seeking foreign investment. Now he has but, gone on a private visit. Mm -hmm. I, do, I wonder what that means, a private visit. Is, on, is he on leave? We need a president r right here at home and he's going for private visits to France. So a private visit, is he going to pay his own way to that place? I Will he use the money, know. the taxpayers' money, to go on a private visit? I don't know what it is. He's globetrotting to make sure that he will <clears throat> get investors to come into the country and all that. But then is the, is the environment conducive enough for foreign investors to want to come in and stay and thrive because i mean if i'm putting my money somewhere i expect profitability mm -hmm. so how is the social social economic environment in nigeria as of right now for foreign investors to come in and say oh yes i can come here and i know i'll be profitable my business you know, will thrive. And whenever the business is no longer profitable and I want to go... And I can't leave. I can't leave. They've, they've <laughs> handcuffed me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think it's just a, a subtle way that Blinken has used to tell him that uh, conditions are too, too bad in Nigeria and you have to do something about it. And we cannot come. Even though he said, oh, Blinken said, um, uh, the biggest economy, the largest population. He was giving all the good things mm -hmm. about China Nigeria. Like but him. after that, he said that the economic, uh, the barriers have to be removed for mm -hmm. investments. What are these barriers? I'm sure the presidency and all the people in government, they know it, but are they ready to do it? Because first of all, no matter what you see as an economic expert or anything, you have to think about security. The mm -hmm. security is not there. So. How can I come and invest in a country where there's no security? Yeah. How can I come and invest in a country where I'm not even sure of the stability of your, your mm -hmm. currency? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. Today it could be anything. To, so there is no way I can plan. Yes. Unless your currency is stable. The planning is difficult. Mm -hmm. So investment will be very difficult in this place. It will be very difficult. And now that companies are leaving, what is being done by the government to encourage the companies that are already indigenous companies that are staying here? Even yeah. indigenous companies are thinking about leaving to Bene, to Ghana, to other places, mm -hmm. and just using Nigeria as the market. Why do we even keep looking for foreign investors? Because I remember China had to, you know, block their borders. They, they had to go through that process of saying, you know what, we're shutting out of the world. We want to start producing our things. And I, I remember one time they started this whole campaign of, 
buy buy Ninja to grow the mm -hmm. Naira. Mm -hmm. I can't remember how the phrase yeah. was coined, but it was some it was of some sort. Buy buy Ninja to grow the Naira. So why and they got the, all their cars from outside the country? They were going, the hundred and sixty million buy, Naira SUVs, somewhere. um, the yacht as well that's from out <laughs> out of the country. But yes, how do we um, promote Nigerian goods? Because all we do, like I mean, we're talking about forex now. All we do is buy things from outside, all we do is import. Are we looking at how to export? Because that's even how you grow your revenue. So we need to start looking at, you know, encouraging the businesses that are here, producing for ourselves. At least let's even produce what we use first before we say, okay, the standard is good enough for us to export now. Let's try it out. Because if you never try, you never know. So we'd, I don't know if I'm capable of producing this, this, the ceramics of, you know, to create this mug right now. Mm. I don't know what the capability of Nigeria is to say, okay, yes, we can produce it and it's good quality that we can use. And when we say, oh, this is amazing, we start to export that and that brings more revenue into Nigeria. So we need to start looking for, you know, not just looking for foreign investors, the ones that are here, promote them, encourage them to be able to do better. Well, there was this story I was told a long time ago, how someone uh, perfected uh, a, the a yam pounder. Mm. He invented it in Nigeria mm. because, of course, they don't pound yam in China or America. Yeah. So he did that and was looking for support and all that. He never got it. Then he sold the patent to somewhere, someone else uh, abroad. And then the person produced it and brought it back to Nigeria. Yes, to send to sell. To, to Imagine. They don't pound yam in China. Now we have yam pounders from uh, other places, and we're so happy that it's not from Nigeria and all that. We're lo we There's have even that stereotype. Things. The moment you know that it's not, it's Nigerian, you'll be like, eh, I don't want it. But you say, oh, it's imported. Oh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. It has to be of good quality. Mm -hmm. But we can also make things that are of you know, good quality. All Nigerian products are not inferior. So. I, I, saw, I saw a small a young boy hawking oha. Oha is a vegetable. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So he was hawking Oha and he said, this Oha is from Italy, you know, and people were just laughing and they, they were enjoying it. But it just told me the kind of mentality we have yeah. so that everything has to come from outside before mm -hmm. it is regarded as something that is good enough. Yeah. It, it's, it's a very bad thing for us. Very bad. Okay. Um, well, let's just take maybe let's just take one more before we wrap, the, or wrap up this segment. So, Chairs of government share 1.1 trillion naira from federation account revenue. They keep sharing our money. I was having a conversation with someone yesterday, and I said, I feel like Nigeria, the money, they've collected it, they've shared it, and everybody's just moping right now. And that money is just, is just with some select few, the 1% of the 1%. Because you hear that they are borrowing money, they are getting money from this, a batch of loot has come again. Yada, yada, yada. But then, we're not seeing this money. How is the tiers of government sharing 1.1 trillion naira from the Federation account revenue? Yesterday, there was this news that um, uh, oil producing states, there was a, a, an amount that was given that the oil producing states have uh, shared among themselves mm. uh, within a, a particular time, yet their debt profile is rising even higher and higher. And mm. I was just asking myself, what is the reason for this? When you talk, experts will tell you that borrowing is okay, so long as you're using it well. Mm -hmm. But are they using it well? Mm -hmm. And why are they borrowing? Because whatever they're doing, I, I must say, whatever they're doing in the states, in most of the states that I know, money that they could get from the state itself can do all those things yeah. so what you are you borrowing for we are not seeing any significant improvement in your state because of the money you're borrowing in fact some of the things are dilapidated yeah. you go to cross river for instance the obudu cattle ranch that used to have wonderful facilities is going down the tinapa project that had yeah. so much money pumped into it is going okay. down mm -hmm. so every Every government comes and they want to have a legacy project. And when they have this legacy project, the next one that comes... There's no continuity. Of, there's no continuity. And they say government is a continuum. You're just sharing this money and nothing else. You go there, share it, put it in Ghana, Moscow, and then that's the end. 
So right side. government has to show working and yes, win the trust I love of the that show workings. You have to win the trust of the people because if I see that <clears throat> there will be quality education, the growth will be good, security will be good, and everything I need, health will be good, then you ask me for tax, mm -hmm. I will have no problem. Even if I'm giving you half of my salary because I know that half of my problems are already solved. Yeah. Yeah. But I pay tax, I still have to be the one to go and scoop. Uh, soil from somewhere to come and fill potholes. I still have to be the one to go to a private school and put my child. I still have to be the one to secure myself and to look I'm for doing good everything health. Everything for myself. myself. So why am I paying tax? Well, for you right. to share. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Um, when, we when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic. Please stay with us.